Family is my beloved Alpha Kappa Alpha, our divine nine, and my HBCU brothers and sisters. Glenda Carr, President and CEO of Higher Heights. The announcement of Senator Kamala Harris was highly anticipated, right? And it wasn't anticipating necessarily her name, but it was the fact that there had been eight months of speculation of which woman would Vice President Biden pick. Black women bring their authentic selves when they govern. I think we are truth tellers in the spirit of Shirley Chisholm. As you know, Black women <laughs> literally will speak truth to power. Um, and they do that as advocates, they do that as activists, um, and they certainly bring that to city halls, state houses, and Washington in a very unique way. And when they fight for issues, um, you know, they center the, the issues of the experience that they come from, but they also are fighting for the full nation. I'm Howard Henderson, the director of the Center for Justice Research and professor of justice administration at Texas Southern University. I'm a professor at Historical Black College the university. And so I know what that means to have that opportunity uh, to be on the world stage to show uh, the product of, of our educational system and, and this long historical legacy of educating Black people uh, when predominantly white institutions uh, would not allow us access into their institutions. Her example, her matriculation uh, shows the ability to personally grow and evolve into a better space uh, than you originally started. And I think that's the American way. And she expresses that. And I think once that the American people get a chance to see who she is and understand her perspective, I think we'll be much the better for that. I think what's great about that is it is oftentimes there's a, you know, people talk about the difference between going to an HBCU and an Ivy college, right? So, you know, historically, uh, many of our leaders have gone to Ivy League colleges. Um, this is an opportunity to really show how competitive and well prepared these institutions have prepared most of our, our, our national leaders. And so I suspect a couple of things going to happen that you have alumni walking a little taller with a little more pride. And I think it's introducing HBCUs to a whole broad new network of potential supporters. It is now for Senator Harris and Vice President Biden now to continue to speak to the people. And our goal as informed voters is to have a dialogue back and to ask questions, clarify the questions um, about her record and places where you are. But I will certainly share with you that her breadth of work and depth of work um, is centered in progressive policies that frankly, you know, Higher Heights believes are beneficial for Black women, our families, and our communities. What makes her different in this regard really is that, you know, she has been able to achieve uh, a certain level of success that we oftentimes don't attribute to the Black women, but we know that's false. Uh, unfortunately, Black women don't receive the same level of attention as males and even African-American males. But I, I think she also highlights the diversity that we have in historical Black colleges and universities around this country. I mean, we also have several uh, white majority historical Black colleges and universities. I think the diversity uh, that HBCUs represent uh, she are, is going to be able to speak to that narrative. HBCUs are uniquely situated to solve many of today's problems. If you look at what's happening around us, you see record unemployment, uh, you see pandemics, and you see the African-American community being directly impacted in both of those spaces. If you think about who is going to solve the problem, you think initially about historical black colleges and universities because we share the lived experiences uh, with many of the folks who have found themselves on the, the negative end of these realities as we see them today.